Okay guys, what do we got going on here? Let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the Gravity Electric project that I haven't talked about in a long time, and and uh, I want to give everybody an update on this because this is a, a project that is is dear to my heart. Okay, yes, I love to ride motorcycle, and that's all good. And motorcycle videos are great. I know a lot of you guys like to watch me do my motorcycle thing. We definitely, as we go into springtime of 2019, we're definitely gonna do some motorcycle videos. But today we're gonna talk about the gravity electric generator or gravity electric now what is gravity electric well think of thermal electric right or wind electric or nu nuclear electric nuclear nuclear energy or wind energy okay thermal energy well this is gravity energy it just simply means we're deriving our our electricity from gravity okay um let's talk about what we're looking at here so and one of my last videos, which has been a while, I talked about having to have a really big winding wheel. So what we're looking at in front of us right now is the bearings, one right there and one right there. Those are three inch bearings, they're really big bearings, okay? And we're looking at the, uh, the actual hub material or the axle for the wheel, okay? So, Let's, let's get this bearing out there. Look at the size of that bad boy material. That's three inches in outside diameter. And I believe, if I remember right, this is about uh, maybe about three quarters of an inch in thickness here on the wall. Okay. So this is a really strong piece of uh, tubing, seamless tubing. Okay. Steel. Right. Okay. So that, that's either three quarter or half inch. Uh, thickness. I can't remember which one it is. Okay, but I'll, I'll, I'll when we get into this project later, I'll, I'll do a list of all the components. Okay, and then of course we got the bearings, which are really heavy, right there. Okay. All right. So let me step over to this side and I'll talk to, talk to you a little bit about how this is going to be designed. Okay. So the the winding wheel, which I'll in a, a little bit here, I'm going to show you the winding wheel later in the video. Um, what I intend to design, okay? The winding wheel is gonna be mounted somewhere in this area, okay? And then the spokes are gonna go vertical, obviously, 360 degrees, right? And it's gonna be similar to a collarary wheel, okay? On that second, this portion over here, half of this, okay? So that's gonna be a four foot diameter wheel and it could handle as much as anywhere from 600 to 1,000 pounds. I mean, it can handle a lot of weight, okay? Then the second half of this from about here over is actually gonna go right into the gearbox. So this bearing would actually be, let me move the bearing. The bearing would be like, make sure I don't crush my electrical cables here. The bearing would be somewhere about right there, right? So this would be the hub area for the wheel. And the second half of this, the bearing would be about right here. Second half, this is going to go right into the gearbox. Okay, obviously that hole is going to have to be drilled out, and it's going to have to be some work done to the gearbox. Okay, so the second half goes right into the gearbox. So the axle or the hub of the winding wheel is also going to be an integral part of the gearbox. It's going to be the first axle for the um, for what we call the gear train in the gearbox. Okay, so. Let me get the light over here and we'll talk about this gearbox a little bit here. Okay, so you have a better idea how that's going to work. All right. So, if you can imagine, that axle, that hub for the winding wheel, is going to go right into the gearbox and replace, replace that little shaft, right? Now, everything you're seeing here is not, to, is not necessarily the final, the final product. I'm just throwing some some um, sprockets in here for display purposes only, right? Now, most likely, what we're gonna end up doing here is going with two sprockets like this. And the reason we'll do that is called a double roller. The reason we go with the double roller is because the amount of force coming off of this, this axle, this hub going into the gear train is gonna be very high. And if we were to use one sprocket with one chain, can almost guarantee the chain would break. Okay, so we're gonna go with a double roller. We may even have to go with a triple roller. And we'll just see 
I'll do the calculations for the load and then a minimum two chains will come off this first two sprockets this axle right and come over to these two sprockets now again these two sprockets are just for demonstration purposes they would actually end up being the same size right and they would drive this big sprocket and that big sprocket would drive this little tiny sprocket over here and that would drive this sprocket and that sprocket finally drives the PMA right and the PMA the alternator which this one's by Windblue, we have some hookups here and we can get our electricity out of here in, in direct current DC, okay? Now, one of the challenges, is, so when you're when the weight is falling, the system's gonna be driving like this, right? Okay. Now, one of the challenges is what do you do when you've got to wind the weight up? How do you disconnect the, the rewinding of the wheel and the weight lifting the weight back up from the gearbox well these two sprockets in here would be what we call freewheel sprockets okay hear that so when the when the weight's being lifted you get this you get that freewheel sound when the weight's falling it drives the whole system very cool right so this way we share the load across two or more sprockets so the chains don't break. We have a way to drive the system all the way to the PMA. And we have a way to disconnect the lifting of the weight back up and winding everything back up on the wheel, which is going to be here. As the weight comes back up, we won't be trying to pull this entire gearbox at the same time because that's a, going to be really high resistance. And we don't want that. So we're basically going to disconnect it, the gearbox from the winding wheel at this point right here when we get to this axle okay pretty cool right you guys follow me so far right so there's a little bit of machining that has to be done to this this three inch piece of material right here we're gonna have to um put this on a lathe and just take off a few thousands of the diameter because right now this is three inch diameter and the bearings are three inch, so the this material will not fit into the into the um, into the bearings right now because they're the same size. So we gotta gotta just take off about a thousandth or two or three thousandths and then get them to go into the get them to go into the bearings. Okay, so now what we're looking at is just a drawing that I made up of the actual plate, what I'm calling the weight carriage. Okay. And this is where we're gonna actually have the weight hanging from the winding wheel, okay? So, this is just gonna be a steel plate, and I don't know the exact dimensions yet, maybe like uh, three feet by three feet, I don't know yet. And you'll notice in the center there it says, Olympic barbell size hole. So for testing phase, when we're, when we're doing our testing, right? we're gonna be using Olympic weights. They're made of iron. That's just during the testing phase, okay? So that's what that hole in the middle of the plate's gonna be. Now, we're looking, we're looking at the plate from, the, from above, right? Imagine this, you're looking from above. And a cable is gonna be attached to this plate right in the middle, okay? And Olympic plates are gonna go sit right on this, see this dotted line here, dotted circle? Imagine that's where the plate's gonna sit. Olympic plates are gonna sit on there like that. What are Olympic plates? Those are bodybuilders, weightlifters use Olympic plates. You can, you can look at Google if you want to know what an Olympic plate is. Okay. So a piece of tubing would go in the middle here and the plates would slide over the tubing. Okay. The hole in the plate would go over the tubing and the outside of the plate be here. You know, we might get a few hundred pounds out of that kind of setup just for testing. Okay. And then over here in the corner you see something that says cable hole prevents rotation during free hang. So this is gonna be hanging below the big winding wheel. The weights are gonna be on here. Cable's gonna be attached to this plate. And what we don't want is we don't want this plate rotating while it's going, while it's starting to descend. We don't want this plate spinning and all that. So we're gonna stick a cable through that hole from the floor all the way up to the, well, to the top, something above it. So the cable will be running straight through that hole, nice tight cable to keep this from rotating. Okay. 
so the plates will be balanced perfectly on here because the hole in the center is going to keep the weights perfectly balanced. So the plate's not going to be tilting like this or tilting back or any of that nonsense, right? You're not going to have the, plates, the plate moving around. The weights are going to be right in the center. And this little cable hole will keep the whole plate from spinning while it's going down. So we'll have nice control over this weight while it's descending and while it's uh, being lifted back up. Okay, so that's during the testing phase. Now you're going to notice, in addition to that, we've got some things called T-slot. Okay, T-slot sliding hole to, to centralize weights. Well, what is that all about? Well, you'll notice there's also some square, there's a square here too, see it? When we get when we get down to the final product, okay, and we're done testing and we get to a final, we're probably going to use what's called lead plates. And why would we use lead? Because lead has a much higher um, molecular density, okay? And that just means that um, lead weighs more than iron per unit of square area, or you can even think of volume, but we'll go with area to keep things simple. So for one square foot of lead weighs a lot more than one square foot of iron, okay? And that means we can use less lead plates that will take up less room or less height than the Olympic plates would. And that's important because the less weights we have stacked up on this, right, the, the less plates are on here, the more distance we have for this whole plate to descend and the more runtime we get for the generator. Follow me? Okay. So that's kind of an idea of how the design is going to work. And these T-slots are going to have, um, if you ever look, if you guys get a chance to look up, um, it's called a, a mill clamp set. If you ever did any drill press or mill clamp set, these are little slots and you, you put the clamp through there and it slides and you tighten it down. So the clamp would come up like this and it would centralize and hold the lead plates in place. Because the lead plates, we're probably not going to have a hole in the middle. We're not going to drill a big old hole like this and, and, loot and mess up the lead plates, right? So we're just going to use clamps to... to keep those lead plates in place so they don't shift around while we're lifting them. We don't want things shifting around while we're lifting them. Uh, we want, it's a lot of weight. We don't, want to, we don't want things to go bad and come crashing down. So multi-design, a multi-design, a multi-functional, I should say, um, a weight carriage, steel plate weight carriage, to handle different types of weights that go on here, Olympic plates, lead plates, because we don't want to box ourselves into what kind of, what kind of material we're going to use to, um, to get the weight we need, the mass we need to run this generator, okay? Okay, let's talk about the winding wheel you see before you here on the video. Now, this is obviously a really big winding wheel. Um, this is a calorie, <laughs> kind of hard to pronounce that word. Um, these wheels come out of uh, England, and you don't really see these wheels being used anymore that I know of. Um, this was used in deep mine uh, coal operations in England. I think the last ones that were operational over there was 1980s, 1990s, maybe something like this. Anyway, this one looks like about 20, 25 foot diameter wheel. Um, we're only going to be dealing with a four foot diameter wheel, but this gives you an idea where we're headed. Now, that, this has a nice A-frame. See down there? You can see that there's this frame that holds the wheel in place. So we're going to be using a frame very similar to that. Okay. In this picture, you see the wheels touching the ground. In our case, obviously, the wheel's going to be as far as we can get it above the ground without hitting the ceiling in the garage we're in, right? Um, you can see in the middle of the wheel, there's, there's a hub there and a bearing. So very similar to what I already showed you earlier in the video. Um, there's there's going to be a lot of similarities to what you're seeing in front of you when, when we get down to the wheel that we're doing. So um, pretty cool. We're pretty excited about where we're headed with this. The wheel, by far, is going to be the the most work getting that all put together we may have to buy what's called a uh, Haasfeld uh, bender so uh, a Haasfeld bender is something that helps you bend materials and we're probably going to need one of those to actually bend 
uh, and make a, a circumference uh, and make the material for the actual outside of the wheel. In other words, a circle, right? Haasfeld Bender. Look that up when you get a chance. Pretty cool, pretty cool device. All right, everybody, listen. I hope you really enjoyed the video today. I hope you enjoyed the update. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and click that Texas flag that you see right there in front of you. And if you want to watch some motorcycle videos, just up at the top of the video there, I got a playlist. Enjoy those. Until next time, everybody, we'll see you right back here again real soon.